to coverage of the BR6 Friday night, joined by Gio and Ollie here at the desk. And this is the one you've been waiting for, my friends. We do have a hotly contested sixth slot in our standings as we move towards the LATAM League finals. And it is these two teams that are scrapping hard for it. Our next matchup features Black Dragons facing off against MIBR. MIBR fresh off their first win from this stage yesterday. Can they convert it to another win today? Can they get another W on the board as they chase down that slot at the LATAM League Finals? We will find out. Let's hear from the players, get their perspectives heading into this match, and then we'll preview what's to come on the other side of this. Contra a MBR foi um jogo bastante difícil, a gente de novo demorou para entrar no jogo e algumas plays que a gente fazia não dava certo. E foi um dia difícil para a gente também, os moleques foram superiores e isso custou a partida. Cara, o confronto com a BD a gente se preparou muito bem para aquele jogo, era o início da Super Week, né? A gente acabou de perder para T1 no litoral, se eu não me engano, e aí a BD quis levar para o litoral, a gente meio que sabia disso por causa do Viva e tal, que jogava aqui. E tipo, ele sabia que a gente ia forçar o litoral também, então foi esperado dos dois lados e a gente acabou tendo uma ótima partida aí, ganhando 7 a 1. O jogo contra o MBR hoje vai ser um jogo bem difícil, como sempre. É, eu sempre acho um time difícil de jogar contra por conta da adaptação deles ser muito forte, mas acredito que hoje a gente vai jogar muito bem contra eles e trazer essa vitória. Cara, eu acho que vai ser um bom jogo. Contra a BD é sempre um bom jogo. Os caras lá são muito gente boa, muito nosso amigo. Os caras jogam bem, então tipo, tem que vir sempre preparado para o jogo, porque os caras podem vir com tudo. This is sure to be a hotly contested match between these two players, and I know, or these two teams, I should say, and the players are going to be playing their guts out here. But, Ollie, where are they going to be doing it? What's going to go through the minds of both of these teams as we get through the map picks here? My apologies for that. Uh, in terms of Black Dragons, we typically see them be uh, quite an aggressive team. Um, so we could see them maybe move to, you know, a more aggressive map. Um, but honestly, I don't think that there's going to be anywhere that they're going to be able to take MIBR to and absolutely guarantee this one. MIBR, whilst they aren't at full strength here, they're going to want to try and get something on the board. And well, it looks like we're going to be going back to a chalet. That is honestly probably one of the last maps that I would have suggested here for these two teams. Not only because we saw MIBR get the win there yesterday against Santos, but because it just isn't a map that we actually really see Black Dragons play. They've played it once recently, uh, and they lost it to Team Singularity, I believe, inside of the... Uh, sorry, Supernova, uh, inside of the Copa do Brasil. So it's not a not a map that they've played too much. It's pretty much their permanent ban. Um, so a bit of a strange one, especially seeing as the Black Dragons had the choice there to go to Cafe or not. I don't know how you can lose a map ban against MIBR at the moment in their current state, but I feel like that's what Black Dragons have walked into here and done. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about this. Gio, you can walk us through exactly what this means here for Black Dragons, their position in the league, what they're playing for here, and how this map ban affects them. It, it doesn't sound like it's good news. Yeah, I mean, up until MIBR's win yesterday, Black Dragons were in that sixth place spot, which would allow them to qualify for the Copa Elite Six. And of course, the results of the Copa Elite Six is going to define who from the Latin American region will be attending the major in Mexico in August. So this is a big deal. Mm. And Black Dragons did not qualify for the Copa Elite Six back in stage one. To have had MIBR suddenly take that sixth place spot yesterday would have been gut-wrenching. And today going up against them directly is pretty much going to solidify who will be making it into Copa. For Black Dragons to have ostensibly lost the map veto process here is huge. And I have to say, I am I am very surprised that they have gone to Chalet. Cafe is not even a bad map for them. It's one that they have considered going to a number of times. I honestly thought that maybe they would look to take this to a club or a cafe. So the fact that it came down to Cafe and Chalet, they've chosen to go to Chalet, mesmerizing to me and i would assume and desperately hope on their behalf that they have something lined up for this because 
this like this is not their map this is the very opposite of their map you imagine their map this is everything that that isn't their map is no building on a flat desert rather than a building in the snow on the mountains let's talk about Amobiado. they've just won uh their game uh, uh their first game of the stage yesterday ollie so winning their sales perhaps a bit of confidence now for them yeah quite possibly and i think maybe even more confidence when they see the map for today uh they're going to be pretty happy to go back to chalet it's a map that they do quite well on not only inside of brazil but internationally as well so it's it's nice for MIBR. They don't have to prep more than one map this week. They can just sort of walk straight into this one and go, yep, yeah, you know what? We can just do what we did yesterday um, and, and we'll see how that goes. Now, obviously, the disadvantage for MIBR is they haven't got a lot of recent VOD on Black Dragons on this map. And if Black Dragons have made a conscious choice inside of these map vetoes to get to this map of Chalet, there's a chance that we could see some direct countering and some, some real sort of uh, homework that has been done on the side of Black Dragons to sort of destable MIBR here because they weren't perfect yesterday. They played exceptionally well and they got the win against Santos. It was a 7-2. It was one of the more convincing scorelines of the day, but still there are going to be holes there. There are going to be things that you can start to try and exploit. Black Dragons might be looking to try and do this today. For MIBR, it is all about can they do the same thing twice? Can they get two results in a row and start to make this a consistent thing and really start to cement that place? Because this is the big game. This is the game that essentially is going to largely decide who goes through into the Copper Elite Six. Important to note here, unless I'm mistaken, Philippox is playing. Philippox, of course, suffering a, a shoulder injury that affected his ability to, uh, to slice and dice with the best of them. But you can see him there, bottom left, he is... I mean, we had some oh, we had some great jokes and japes and jests yesterday, didn't we? Oh, knee slapping, thigh slapping, had the whole squad laughing, talking about Xbox, you know, Xbox original controllers and, you know, yeah, guitar we hero. Know what it's, on. It it's actually unforgivable. It's a PS4 controller. I mean, I was... Oh, come on, I, try I, harder. Yeah, no, it is actually a PS4 controller. I don't know, man. There were some whispers that he may have got his hands on an advanced copy of that new, you know, the Steam Deck thing, and he yeah. was playing it playing it at home, just like sat on the dunny. But no, he is playing on a real computer with a PlayStation 4 controller. And I'm sorry to tell you the boring truth of the matter, but that is the fact. Look, you know, it's so impressive as well that he's doing that against all these M&K players who you know, aren't contesting with this injury. You've really got to admire the guts on this bloke, the fact that he's getting up and about and, and, and you know, making sure that he's putting his name to these games, even in his injured state. Really impressive, Gio, from him that, that he's making this comeback in this way. Yeah, and he's been doing really well. And one of the things that we did note about MIBR yesterday in their game was just how well coordinated everything they did. And you can tell that there was purpose behind all their decisions. So even though he's kind of impeded in his mechanical ability compared to what we know him to do, uh, I think having that structure and a lot of their decision making has really helped facilitate the way that he's played, regardless of the disadvantage he has and i think just from a psychological standpoint ollie it makes a huge difference you know it's a huge knock to morale this is something that happens not just with esports but you know meat space sports as well you know the sports balls of the world whatever they're doing when they're kicking or hitting various inflated orbs it it does affect a team to have one of their players knocked out like this and to have a comeback it's like this this is some real win of the sales this is some real momentum it, it's gonna it's gonna lift up this team to have fully pox back uh playing uh, beside them here yeah it really should do i'm just looking over at the stats from from the game yesterday i was curious as to how fully pox stacked up there he actually got a better rating than both hunter and rise from the side of santos um it's not saying a lot he got a 0 0.69 rating so not nice. the not the greatest of days but like you say a nice number nonetheless uh he went four to six uh in terms of kd so really you know just being there and being a presence being a friendly voice inside of the comms able to get a couple of important kills and some of those kills were quite important we think back to that game yesterday and we did see uh, a couple of those engagements being a bit like, yeah, you go fully box, like you take him out of the game with a controller um, and still, you know, assist his team to win in the round. So, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be great to, to, to have him back on in. And I just hope that MIBR can start to really build off yesterday now. Yes, indeed. Well, we're going to find out short enough here, my friends. We're going to head down to the match between these two players. Remember, the sixth spot here effectively up for grabs for either of them as we head towards the LATAM League finals. It's time to head down to the chalet once again for our next matchup between Black Dragons and MIBR. Take it away, Geo and Ollie.
Thank you very much, Riley. We are going to be jumping in now. A little bit of a delay getting into this one, but these two teams are ready and raring to go. Chalet is going to be the map. Black Dragon starting off on the attack. MIBR starting off here on the defense. Maybe, just maybe, a little bit of opportunity there for Black Dragons to flex some of that aggression. I'll be honest, Geo, for all that is on the line with this one, I'm still expecting to see a very aggressive Black Dragons here today. I'm, I'm just worried about Black Dragons. I think that they... You know, actually coming into today, and there was something that we discussed last night after the broadcast, was we were saying, you know, who do you think is going to win? Like, this is a this is a big game, and after MIBR's results yesterday, it, it's less clear. And I said, no, I think Black Dragons probably still likely have this. But seeing the way the map veto has gone and how much that works against Black Dragons, I, I just don't know if I still think that anymore. And I think this is probably one of the harder games to call as well. Um, but this has just really thrown a spanner in the works for me. And I am, I'm along for the ride just as much as any of you watching this are, because yeah, I mean, I, I just don't know. <laughs> it's a tough one to call. There's a lot on the line here. You've got to expect that Black Dragons have, obviously they've consciously chosen to come to Shallow or they've consciously left it in is maybe a better way of phrasing things. So there's going to be some sort of idea of what they want to try and achieve here. So, I don't know, it's that age old, you know, you, a team that doesn't really play a map very often starts to play a map and you think, mm, what are we expecting here? It's like the Liquid and Villa sort of saga that we saw in, unfolding uh, yesterday. Which so, to be fair, they did win. Well, they did. And but it's Team Liquid. I, it, it is liquid. Um, so, you know, you sort of balance those things out against one another and you, you maybe come to the middle ground of still we don't know what to expect with Black Dragons on this map. Is it a case that they permanently ban it because they just dislike it and they want to try and save it for a special occasion? They're going to have scrimmed it. It's a new map. They're a new team. They're going to have new ideas uh, very similarly to the way that W7M try and approach this map in that, you know, they've got nice ideas and nice holds. They're just not quite as refined as maybe they need to be just yet. Um, maybe we see similar here from Black Dragons. As far as MIBR, we kind of know what to expect, right, with them on this map. Yeah. That's, uh, well, I mean, if, yeah, I guess we'll find out. Interestingly as well, I just want to point out, because I would imagine that there are a number of people who aren't aware of this. The team the Black Dragons lost, uh, Chalet 2 in the Copa do Brazil, which was Team Supernova, was actually the previous home of uh, Perez, who came onto their team after the Copa do Brazil. He impressed them enough from those games. So um, I suppose in part, you can argue that this was the team that won it because they have one of the players from that team. <laughs> but I just think it's it's an interesting little thing anyway, because the Black Dragons that played in the Copa do Brazil was still the Black Dragons with Yuna and Hogsword, which who who did consequently get dropped. Maybe a little bit of inside information? Question mark? <laughs> Quite possibly there that uh, Perez is gonna have a bit Pre of an Perez idea. Perez has come in like, hey guys, this is how this is how we play Chalet. Don't worry, I got this. Pick Chalet will win, I promise. <laughs> Guys, I've got a strat. These are all things that are said before oh. unfortunate events. But we do see a, a nade kill coming in onto Fowls. Live is actually getting the kit down. He will be yokai'd off briefly. Now it's one of those tough situations where you've kind of gone for a bit of a rough plant. You've really overextended here and you've got to try and make it work. Reduct, he moves through. He's able to take Live down and drop the diffuser onto the floor. Still, Philippox is left as the sole survivor. He's going to be underneath on the alibi. He's got a shred of health. Not even going to get through the first engagement resets there, taking him on out. That Dragons, some nice angles being watched there. They're going to take a nice early round. All right. Well, that's a good start. One thing that I, I do want to point out as well is that I, I love that they, the nade that got lined up Got a kill, great, but it still missed the shield that was right next to where it landed. But sure, I mean, if you can kill the person without removing the utility, great. It's, it's, that's fantastic. Really good swift control of piano. 
Um, even though the plant wasn't actually put down, ultimately in the end, didn't really matter. But the room that they required in order to do it was there. The only thing that was stopping them was in fact that Yokai drone. But they aggressed so much onto the remaining players of MIBR that control of the Yokai drone wasn't even possible to be taken after that. Um, and I mean, Black Dragons ultimately didn't even need to bother trying to plant the diffuser because they got everything done that they needed to do that did not require that or did not include that. So it was a it was a nice swift round from them. And MIBR are gonna be moving down into bar rather than having a second go at master. Um, I don't see anything particularly wild about what they've decided to bring. We do oftentimes see frost. Gebral, we spoke about it yesterday, how frost is very popular, particularly on this site. It was something that we saw earlier on in the first game that we had today. Um, it was W7M who played a lot of Frost out on the, the mezzanine when defending this site in particular. Interestingly, they decided to do it without a shield. So I hope that wherever Falls stations himself, which is, looks like it's going to be in the bar back store, doubt he'll need a shield there. So I just hope his shield's somewhere useful. Let's see where... The entry is going to be decided here. Black Dragons really didn't waste any time in getting themselves in and attempting to plant the diffuser there. They were already sort of in the site at around the minute 30 mark, which is exceptionally early. Especially with the way that a lot of the games have been going so far today and inside of this stage as a whole, but... Well, the Black Dragons are one of those aggressive sides that really will bring the heat and start to apply it quite early. And if they get the, the feeling and the impression that that's going to be something that stresses and pressures MIBR here, then I wouldn't be surprised to see it be a trend that continues. Resets, he moves through, taking down Philippox. Almost entire control of Library. There are still going to be players on the periphery here for MIBR, but they're not really in too much of a position to do much retaking Reduct. Find some success on the site. I am himself taken out there on the Zephyr. An E1D to root everybody in place, but Black Dragons are well positioned here to start advancing through. Four versus four, so there's no discernible advantage to either side, but Black Dragons were pretty quick to overwhelm MIBR in the last round. There's the removal of the mirror window simply by shooting the canister on it. And Files, again, this is a kind of a topic we spoke about earlier, Ollie, because half the backstore wall is, of course, soft, and that's forced him into a corner where he has to try and hold the hatch from the narrowest margin. Once again, Live made an attempt at the plant that got off it pretty quickly. The Toxic Babe canisters filling the room. Here's the shotgun to come out, but Reduct actually misses. He's going to have to back off as Perez gets downed. Three versus two now. There's still enough time remaining here for Black Dragons to start to try and get the plant down. And with only Reduct alive, it's going to be increasingly more difficult. The flank being hauled there. Resets and Patoxy finding the final two. Live was confirming that plant as well. Another well-executed round there from Black Dragons. Getting that advantage nice and early on. And again, some strange side set up from MIBR. It was a criticism we made inside of the first game we watched here today um the furia w7m game where there was times where that stock wall wasn't wasn't reinforced i want to know geo where the reinforcement is that is that that one is sort of taken up or, or, or the, the the real reason for, for leaving that one soft because i i struggling to see a significant advantage i mean obviously the the answer is because you want to have access to being able to like wall bang and whatnot, um, stuff like that. But I haven't seen the team, especially the teams we've seen today, I haven't seen that be an advantage that overrides the risk of leaving it soft. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess we'll have to watch to see if they do go back there. Instead, MIBR have decided to go back up to the top floor. They're bringing some, is this the exact same lineup that they had before? They had the, the Echo, they had the Mirror. Well, I mean, let's hope that they're doing something a bit different. Black Dragons are opted to bring a Lion this time. I'm very interested to see how the pressure of the E1Ds is going to affect MIBR, because Black Dragons didn't need that. 
back on round number one in order to overwhelm the setup that MIBR had across the top floor. So with it added onto what they're already bringing, I, I fear that it's just going to be too much for MIBR, especially if they are just simply being held in position for fear of getting caught in its intel gathering. And that's the thing. Anything that can assist Black Dragons here into getting a quicker and more aggressive approach and take, they're going to probably try and use it. E1D scan is going to come out, but it doesn't result in anything just yet. Still. It applies that pressure. It lets MIBR know that it is there. And you've always got the fear of a second and third scan coming in. The second scan is going to come in right about now, as there is going to be information this time for Ion to try and work with. Toxie getting on the drone, trying to further assist. Two players from MIBR in the wine cellar. Could be in a position to try and rotate through. This wall left entirely soft. Giving away access in onto the site, apparently. Yeah, it's um, that's a question mark. That's an interesting one. They have the... The wall that's perpendicular to it has been reinforced. But still, gaining control of office is usually quite a big deal if you want to be accessing this site. The Yokai drone down below the desk didn't actually quite find anything, and instead Live is going to find Falls and Lucid as well. A couple kills come back in return, but it takes barely any time for Black Dragons to finally finish up the kills onto MIBR, one of which was with a Claymore, by the way, but I don't think it really matters because Black Dragons, they take their third round. Black Dragon's looking pretty unstoppable here on the attack, and this could be one of the reasons why we have seen them sort of hide away this map, and maybe it's somewhere that they've been putting a lot of work in. I think that they've, they've certainly prepared and countered against things that we saw MIBR doing yesterday. I think, you know, just initially something that springs to mind is MIBR aren't able to really start to keep control of any areas. Typically, if that's something MIBR want to try and do, they're going to bring a Clash in order to assist that. With Clash being banned, it makes things a bit more difficult. With the aggressive nature of Black Dragons and the way that they are really cutting this map in half, with a lot of these rotations and flank watches, and of course the pressure that the EE1D provides, quite often that is all it takes and the end of the round is usually a bit of a formality at this moment in time for Black Dragons just to clean up the final couple of kills that never really seeing seeming too pressured you only really got to look at the amount of kills that are on the side of MIBR to see that five kills inside of four rounds is not ideal They've only showed us two sites so far as well. Yeah, it's probably time to mix things up, right? I mean, there's obviously pros and cons to each side of it, but I always get this instant feeling whenever a team gets this deep into a game and I've only shown two sites, my, my instant feeling is, oh, they don't feel comfortable elsewhere. They don't have any, anywhere else to show. Their strategies aren't deep enough. And that's concerning because, I mean, Black Dragons are going to be feeling that as well. If Black Dragons keep winning these two sites backwards and forwards, they don't really need to worry about what's going to happen. Falls, you moved at the wrong time and now you're going to get caught out. That was really unfortunate. I mean, that is just partly bad siege timing and partly really good aggression from the side of Black Dragons. We've not even seen a full minute and they've managed to pick up three kills. They've only received a little bit of damage in return. Redux and Raps... So much work to do. Live, he's going to be planting and diffuser, and he's going to make it even more difficult. Flip the clock onto these two defenders. Raps pushes on in and finds a kill, but is it going to be enough? Redux joins him as well. Patoxy, though, still on that overwatch. He's going to be able to take down Redux. As Raps is going to rotate his way back upstairs, knowing that there is vertical control and knowing that there are attackers that can just take him on out if he strolls into sight. Perez is going to find that final frag. I mean, that didn't even look like a contest for Black Dragons. They just walked in and did what they liked. I was about to say something very similar. I was going to say MIBR don't look like a team right now. Oh, that's even worse. I, it's not that they're not working as a team. They just don't, like, 
they yeah look yesterday we were spoiled a bit because when they played when they got their win it was a 7-2 victory one of the things we said was this reminds us of the MIBR that we know the MIBR that we saw do so well at SI the MIBR who was near the top of the leaderboard back in stage one the MIBR who came up from team one after last year to fill the hole that was left after the former MIBR went forward into FaZe Clan. And we spoke so much about how they were living up to the name of MIBR that had been left with such high regard after what is now FaZe Clan won the BR6 last year. That was the MIBR that we saw a piece of yesterday and that we could look at and we could say, yeah, in spite of the fact that Felipox has found himself injured and in spite of the difficulties they've had to face, MIBR still exists in there somewhere. And we get here today and I can't see them anymore. It looks like a different team. It really does. Um, and they're going to be a little bit downtrodden, I think, after those first four rounds going in Black Dragon's favor. And it seems to have almost gotten worse as the rounds have gone on. Like that was by far the most decisive round we've seen so far. Black Dragon's pretty much getting the job done inside of the first minute. So certainly a tough one. Certainly one that MIBR are gonna wanna try and shake off and approach the remainder of this game with a bit of a fresh, fresher mindset. See if they can start to try and change their fortune. By no means is it said and done. There's still a job to do from Black Dragons to close this game out. And there's still opportunity for MIBR to step themselves up. But we haven't seen them contest in a very meaningful way just yet. The opening engagement is something that Black Dragons have pretty much got down to a T here. Fowles is being very patient waiting for somebody to hop in through that trophy window. It's actually going to be upstairs in bathroom where the first couple of engagements take place. Though Patoxy, he's going to be able to shut down for Lee Pox. As Perez in, look at him go. People are just throwing bodies at him right now. And he's just holding down Mouse 1. Look at him, Fowls. Fowls could make himself a little bit of a rotate here to get himself out of dodge. And he will do just that. Gets himself into sight, but immediately crossfires are being held. Lucid, he's got so much to do. Finds it down onto Ion. Removes the drone for a time. If he wins this engagement, he might have a chance, but no, Patoxy just trundles along on the lion. Slow as you like, finishing that final kill. Lucid not really in too much of a position to do all too much. This could be a very quick chalet. It's like the chaos that ensued on the top floor. MIBR didn't know which way to look. They didn't know which way to turn. They didn't know which way to expect enemies to be coming from. There was one kill taken by MIBR up there and then they just walked, whether it be into the bathroom door without looking, without thinking Perez might be on the other side, whether it was Raps walking past the soft wall of closet, like right as someone's coming in. They looked frantic. They looked frenzied. It was just bizarre. There, this, it feels like there is this undercurrent of panic that is lapping at their ankles right now, and it's starting to get higher and higher. And they don't want to drown in that because they will not make it to the Cobra Elite Six. Well, that's the reality, isn't it? That's the reality of this game, is that... It isn't going to be... Uh... This is going to be an easy one for Black Dragons to, uh, sorry, for MIBR to, to swallow and to, and to get over because it really means that they ain't going to be getting themselves into Copa. And especially after yesterday and the performance that they put in, I think we were expecting them to challenge a little bit more heavily for this match. And Black Dragons are seemingly just taking it for free at the moment. We need to see a little bit of bite, a little bit of something. I was expecting some of the rounds here to go in MIBR's favour. I was expecting them to have that advantage of being able to defend and, you know, really run down the clock, but that just hasn't been the case at all. Black Dragons have set the pace from start to finish. Back to Master for the third time. Droning coming in from Black Dragons. They don't usually spend tons of time droning, so they just take what they need and they work on that. 
was the first EU1D as well. Philippox just walked straight in front. I'm not going to give him too much flack for that, just given his current situation. And actually, in fact, you know, MIBR do avenge the kill, and they're currently sitting on the man advantage, which is a good start. I think it's the first time in a long time we've seen MIBR have an advantage inside of this game, even if it is just a a man count for a round. They've got a chance here to start burning a little bit of time, especially with resets his position. He does find a little bit of damage there as well. The Toxic Babe canister, he's only going to need a, a whiff of that and he's going to be out of action. Diffuser at the top of the Solarium stairs. And MIBR now just dipping themselves off. Needs to be certain that that gas has dissipated before he moves on through, as he really is just one shot here. Still a chance hey. for Black Dragons, but honestly, MIBR, this one really ought to be one they get in the bag. Listen, in Siege, you're always one shot away from death. Yeah, but you don't want to, you're not always one Toxic Babe canister breath away from death, are you? Like, the, this guy is literally one shot. Like, he gets hit by a stun grenade and he's going down. Like, obviously that isn't going to happen because he's on the attack, but still, the final kill comes in there, Luke Kid. Elevated angle, little bit of intel. They might be are not taking any chances with that one. They finally net themselves around and avoid what could have been a very embarrassing first half. Mm, but they have got a really big uphill to climb if they are to bring this back to evening it out and potentially getting a win. You know, the best option that they have for a win now is a 7 5. They would have to win every single round from here on out otherwise if you know if they let just one go the best they can do is overtime if they let two go then that's it it's over and that would be a 7-1 at this point which would be you know it would hurt for them to not make it into copa but i think going losing copa because of a 7-1 loss oh that 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 really would hurt that would be very painful and black dragons Gonna be going down into the basement. And yesterday I had a lot to say about basement defenses on Chalet. Professionally, we have not seen tons of wins when a team chooses to defend the basement. And this again is where we kind of look at the fact that Black Dragons don't really have any experience on this map. Is this excuse me, is this something that they have very specifically got planned? Because the problem that you have here is that given the lack of coordination that we're seeing from MIBR so far in this game, how much leeway can we give Black Dragons in terms of messiness or inexperience on their own defenses that we can still say they would be the expected team to win? That's the thing that makes judging this scenario actually quite difficult because for a lot of teams, going down to the basement is a huge risk. And if you're going up against just your average team who is doing pretty well, they've been taking some attacking rounds, they're not having problems. It's quite feasible to imagine that you would lose that defense. But given this very specific situation, I actually don't know if MIBR have been playing well enough for me to be that concerned about it. It's always going to be the concern, isn't it, that MIBR aren't going to be able to sort of hang at that level. They've certainly not hung at, the, at that level today in this game. Regardless of what they were able to achieve yesterday, today is a new day and you've got to treat it as such. E1D scan going to come through. And Patoxy able to avoid it for a time. Just going to nick out on one of the drones. There's a, a nice Valkyrie camera outside. It's not really providing anything to peek from, but it's going to give a little bit of intel as to at least where a bit of the push is going to start from. Opening kill here going in favour of Black Dragons. So going in favor of MIBR, Black Dragons actually fall, and they're going to lose live out there on the roam. Not an ideal start, but not the end of the world. You've lost the mute. It really isn't going to uh, change all too much. Mute often used on the roam now, and those mute jammers applied all over the map to assist that roam game. The site is still going to be fairly untouched, as now MIBR have to turn their attention. And so far, the push is coming through a little bit strange. They've gone for a lot of vertical control. They've got the hatch open, and now they're looking to move in through trench. Res is ready. Just in case someone decides to peek on through. 
course, it's going to be the reinforced walls that are the primary focus for MIVR. Try and hold the angles through here. Recepts is in a very aggressive position here to try and hold around the pillar and doesn't actually quite land the shot he was looking for. That was a Gemini that just made its way in that got ignored, but Perez finally rids Black Dragons of the burden. Recess oh. has got that long angle now. He can try and make something work with it. Felipox being down as well isn't ideal. That capital utility would have been very nice here, especially when the kills start to come through. Oh, Black Dragons line them up and they will knock them down. Storming their way through that basement defense. Not really coming up against all too many obstacles at all. Already, they've got themselves onto a match point and they've got... All of the good sites left on Chalet to pick from to go. Oh my god. And I mean, look, most teams, by the time they make a rotation down to Trench, you've maybe got three players who were remaining in Wine or in Snow because oftentimes you'll find a Rome will have been... Um, you know, exhibited by the defending team. Maybe a couple of players picked off and then they all return back to the site. And you've got about three on the site. Okay. So then you've maybe got however many attackers who are looking to push in through trench. It's not usually a full team. It's very, very rarely five players. But regardless, oftentimes that is sufficient pressure from the attacking team to actually break through into the site, especially when you consider how big the basement is. And if you are sharing the responsibility of defending it between three different players, much of the utility would have been removed by then, that becomes very, very difficult to defend. Now, in this scenario, we had a few players who were on the site, but an entire attacking team looking to come in through trench. Five players on the attack could not provide a sufficient pressure to break into a site that is usually a given for an attacking team. Yeah, the cracks run fairly deep from what we are seeing here today. It's... It is a shame to see as well, you know, it might be either just unrecognizable from yesterday. But they still have an opportunity. They aren't out of this just yet, although it really does feel like it at this point. Got to attack downstairs into the bar. Can we start to see a little bit of that coordination start to creep on through? Or will the momentum... The Black Dragons have gained up to this point just be a little bit too much. You look at the side and you look at the performance that a couple of these guys are putting in. Only Live has died more than two times. Ion, Perez, Recess, seven kills apiece. 21 to six, collectively. Patoxy, nine to two. These guys are winning every single gunfight. I think it shows how hungry this team is and how much they want to have an opportunity to prove themselves at a higher level. And they may just get that. They're not too far away. They're about half the round off that. Perez holding on to the bathroom, but he's not going to be overstepping anything. Lucid is probably doomed here. Yeah, he's doomed. <laughs> I didn't see anyone being able to pick him up, and he was so low down. So already, loss for MIVR. This is their last opportunity. We are on match point. Another for Perez. Just playing it patiently. This is the thing with Perez and Resets, is we talk about how aggressive they are, but they are really managed in it. Resets, however, does get taken down by Philippox. But it still leaves Black Dragons with the advantage as MIBR have just three men alive. Philippox's gonna be on the big window repel. He has a chance to get himself up down and upside down and try and hold something there, but immediately looks like he's gonna hit that rotation. Redux is just waiting for the call to make his way on through as well. Fouls on that Solarium repel. MIBR are currently waiting for Fleabox to change position, I believe. No one else is really doing all too much. Redux, he's actually going to push his way through. We'll find Perez. Patoxy trades back out. Redux now pushing through the bathroom live. He's going to be there in position. 
take that engagement final couple of kills go in black dragon's favor what a performance from those guys we didn't know what to expect coming on to chalet black dragons haven't played it a lot but they've certainly stamped down their authority here tonight taking the win 7-1 against mibr that was an absolute decimation of um MIBR and that was for all the MIBR fans out there probably one of the hardest games to watch um and especially knowing that they've pretty much I, I assume mathematically now they cannot make it to the Cobra Elite 6 which means that the team who came third at the world championships of SI will not be going to the major in Mexico um it's going to take a lot of work for MIBR to burst back through into the realm of reverence I think and yes, we can look at it and we can say, you know, so much of this comes down to this injury of Felipox, which is of no fault of anybody on this team. But this is still a big thing to bounce back from. You know, when we get into stage three and presumably Felipox is, is better and he's recovered from his injury, and I really hope that that's the case, this is still a lot of work to come back from. Um, and uh, more than anything, I suspect that it just hurts a lot for both MIVR and the fans of them. But Black Dragons have done incredibly in this stage and their new uh, team members of Perez and Resets have looked like real worthy additions. And this game has more than proved that, I think. It really has. I think the Black Dragons can hold their heads high here. We're gonna bring Riley back in and further this conversation about that game we build it as a big one um and it's it's not that it's fallen flat on its face it's just that it, it went over a lot quicker than we were expecting riley oh yeah i mean we got our money's worth i guess from a gameplay perspective maybe not from a time perspective with the <laughs> seven one uh, not quite a whitewash there but at least a gray wash look your heart goes out to mibr this is a team with a lot of guts the team's playing very hard uh with you know some pretty what a lot of people would consider insurmountable odds they picked up a win yesterday which i know was a real feel-good moment for a lot of people a lot of their fans around the world but you just see that they're a team that's struggling to keep it together and some of the comments that uh that you know Gio and Ali were making during that uh, that match there they weren't they didn't look like a team they weren't playing together with that the coherency you need to compete at the top end of town but still look my heart goes out to them you know this is a tough spot for any team to be in especially one that has uh, you know built itself such a reputation but hey the fans of black dragons some very very good news here it's with seven with this seven and one victory they look overwhelmingly likely to head towards the LATAM League Finals. And Gio, I know after a performance like that, they'll be feeling very, very good. Not only about the win, obviously, but also what the future's holding. Oh, oh my God, this is huge for them. This is their opportunity to go to Copra Elite 6, which they couldn't do in the last stage. They have this much stronger roster now. It was a very controversial decision to ditch Yuna and Hugsword, and a lot of people had conflicting opinions on the matter. But I would say that the uh, the rewards that they have, have reaped in this stage have proven that it was the right decision for the team and they have looked so much better and i, I think that they'll have a great competition there yeah it, it looks like it i mean what are they what they can bring a fair bit out of this stage to the the latin league finals right ollie they've played pretty well i mean you know they haven't won every single one of their games but i think black dragons have certainly as you mentioned they can hold their heads up high up mm. it's not just from today but from this, this entire stage the, 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 you know what we've seen over the last couple of weeks I think they can. I think the biggest opportunity here for Black Dragons and what they've got in front of them is they're going to be able to go to somewhere that isn't the BR6, play a little bit of Siege, get a bit of experience against other regions inside of LATAM, play inside of a best of three format, which is massive. That isn't something that we get in regular stage play that really is reserved for, you know, finals and majors, etc. And we can just start to see how they act and how they behave in that sort of an environment as well. You know, a best of three, it's a much different beast than a best of one. Um, and, and teams often get stretched, caught short, or the or the excel. Um, you know, NIP are a great example of that. They're a really good best of team. Um, whereas inside of the best of one, sometimes we see Black Dragons beating them. And that just is the way things go. So that's what I'm really looking forward to with Black Dragons. And they've got a good opportunity now to further develop. It's an important time as well because they have brought a couple of new players in to then see some early success, get themselves likely into the Cobra Elite Six, get a little bit more experience under the belt. It all starts to work together quite nicely and it builds to giving them a really good standing and a really good baseline to jump on into stage three with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've talked about up and coming teams, team one, whatever else, but it looks like there are teams 
in this Brazil division that are ready to disrupt the status quo, ready to upset the apple cart and make a name for themselves. And certainly if we're going to put, drop that list, Black Dragons has to be on it. Anyway, that is the end of our coverage for game or match, I should say, match number three. Do stick around though, because our fourth and final match is coming your way. We're going to take a quick break, set, get everything set up. And then on the other side of this, more Rainbow Six Siege from the Brazil division. <laughs>